Thank you very much, and thank you for being here today. It's an honor and privilege to be here with you in this Senate chamber and at this Capitol, and I just want to say thank you, each and every one of you. It's humbling to see so many friendly faces. Lieutenant Governor-elect, thank you for your friendship, and I look forward to working with you in the coming years. General Abbott, thank you for swearing me into office today, and I am excited that you will be the next governor of the great state of Texas. <laughs> Ever since I was a young boy, I've known our state was a very special place. Growing up as a sixth generation Texan on land that has been in my family since the mid 1800s, I was taught the values of hard work, a can-do attitude, and gained an appreciation for God's awesome handiwork. Texas has given me so much, from a distinct pride of place and desire to serve others, to a wife who exemplifies beauty, strength, and a modern day supermom. Dara is the absolute. <laughs> Dara is the absolute best part of my life, bar none. If you ever get the urge to run for statewide office, let me give you a piece of advice. Get a spouse like Dara. <laughs> no, really, I'm serious. Running for an office in a state with 254 counties and nearly 270,000 square miles is not a job to tackle alone. She has knocked on doors to ask for votes. She's eaten her share of rubber chicken, and she's given the winning campaign speeches on my behalf. Throughout the years, I've had my share of people say that they would not be voting for me, but they'd be voting for my wife, Dara. <laughs> secretly, and this is the first time I'm telling her, secretly, I've always hoped that she would never run against me. <laughs> so Dara, thank you for being my wife, the mother of our three wonderful children, and for the person that I love with absolutely all of my heart. Speaking... <laughs> Speaking of our children, a guy couldn't ask for better kids than Claire, Julia, and Jonah, or at least on most days. <laughs> After the toughest days on the family farm, in the halls of this Capitol, or on the campaign trail, the cares of the day get washed away when I walk through our front door and get swarmed by at least one of our three excited, loving children. I've been soaking up those precious hugs while they last in part because I know the teenage years are just around the corner. <laughs> Speaking of precious hugs, I grew up surrounded by great-grandparents, grandparents, my parents, great-grandparents actually, my mom, my dad, aunts, uncles, cousins, and each of whom played a significant role in my life, and they have my eternal gratitude for all the life's lessons that you've given me. In part, in part, I'm grateful most for them listening to my very long-winded stories as a child and sometimes, well, as an adult too. You've also listened to my off-the-hand-cuff jokes, but most importantly, I'm truly grateful for the role that you played in my life and the value life lessons that you've taught me. As the grandson of a Baptist preacher, I grew up surrounded by people of faith. Life is full of deep valleys and high ridges that seem impassable. Yet our faith is a bridge across all the lows and the highs in life. It is the value of faith above all else that Dara and I try to instill in our children, Claire, Julia, and Jonah. We strongly believe that no matter what we say as parents, it is their faith that will serve as the foundation upon which all else is built and will act as a compass that will guide them in the challenges of life. Growing up in a hot, humid summers on that farm in Hockley, Texas, where the days started long before the sunrise and ended long after the sunset, they have left a mark on me. As the son and grandson of farmers, I grew up knowing that the day was not finished until the job was done. Yet the most meaningful lessons that they taught me was how a person's handshake is his word and his bond. It was on that farm where I learned that nothing else is more important in character, honesty, integrity, loyalty, and family. Today, I especially want to thank my grandparents, Lowell and Betty Thompson, 
I especially want to thank my grandparents, A.B. and Faye Hager, each of whom played a significant role in my life. I also want to thank my parents, Glenn and Connie Hager, who have put up with my good, my bad, and everything in between. Trust me, I know the task of being a parent is never easy, and their task was probably a little more challenging than most. I want to especially express a thank you to my in-laws, Vic and Carolyn Grisby. We always hear people say that you can't really pick your in-laws, which is really kind of a sneaky way of saying they'd like a do-over. <laughs> well, not for me. 100 out of 100 times, I would pick Vic and Carolyn Grisby, so thank you. When it comes to support, I'm grateful for our friends, both old and new, who stuck with Dara and me through this race and the races before. Most importantly, your prayers have meant the world to us and have often been the difference in our journey forward. I'd be remiss if I didn't thank my former legislative staff who understood that the real boss was not me, but was the taxpayers of Texas. Lastly, I want to thank my campaign team that kept the ship afloat and who did all the heavy lifting required for a successful campaign. In sum, thank you for all of our friends, family, and supporters, because you are the real reason that I was able to take the oath of office today. You inspire me to give Texas my best, because Texas is the best state in our nation. Texas is a land of economic opportunity with no equal, where private property rights are respected, where people can raise a family in safety and entrepreneurs can pursue their dreams and create jobs. Over the past six years, Texas entrepreneurs have created 1.1 million new jobs, which is over two thirds of the net new jobs in our nation. And I'll repeat, over two thirds of the net new jobs in our nation. The overall strength of our economy has contributed to better than expected revenue growth in recent years. In fact, sales tax collections grew 40% from 2010 to 2014. It is no surprise that Texas has been ranked as the best place to do business for the 10th year in a row. With that success and that opportunity it represents, it is no wonder that nearly 500 more people moved to Texas than have typically left on an average day in the past several years. Like I've said before, if you're headed to Texas and you have a strong work ethic, the red carpet is rolled out. But if you want to change Texas, then you can turn around and go right back home. <laughs> And I say that very clearly because your liberal job-killing policies are not welcome for the Lone Star State. Fact is, fact is, we're facing enough challenges to our economic dominance without adding a bunch of naysayers to the equation. In fact, we have a bunch of them in Washington, D.C. already. In a global economy like ours, Texas is affected by events halfway around the world, whether it's the Russian economy, continued unrest in the Middle East, or even North Korean movie critics these days. Higher oil prices that help fuel the expansion of the Texas energy industry have now fallen, and OPEC is struggling to handle how do you deal with Texas's increased production. The resulting lower fuel cost should reduce the price of transporting goods, which is great for consumers and ultimately our economy in fact, the average taxpayer will see the equivalent of a 2% pay raise as a result of lower fuel prices. As we move forward in the months and years to come, we need to stay focused on those things that have formed the foundation of our economy. On a broad scale, we should keep encouraging job creation and innovation, keep taxes low, and limit government spending. We must be more committed than ever to look out for regulations and red tape that hurt small business and cut them out. When it comes to the office of the comptroller, our role is to continue the economic strength of our state. We will focus more than ever on customer service. When it comes to our priorities in the office of the controller, we will focus on our core constitutional functions that include tax collection, accounting, and providing a clear revenue estimate to legislators. 
We'll continue to root out waste, fraud, inefficiency in state government to maximize shareholder value for who? The taxpayer. We'll shine an even brighter light on transparency, on taxes and spending to make government even more accountable to the taxpayers. We will never forget that who we work for is the taxpayer and it's not the other way around. Our job is to handle the basics and then get out of the way. Could you imagine if America would look like today if the federal government adopted the fundamental precepts of the Texas model? Picture what would happen if President Obama said, hey, Texas has created two thirds of the nation's jobs in the last six months, let's take a page out of their playbook. Well, I wouldn't hold my breath. For whatever reason, the federal government seems committed to limiting economic opportunity. And that's why we have to work even harder to keep Texas right on track. I can assure you that my team in the controller's office and I will do everything in our power to keep the Texas economy on track. I'm honored to have the chance to work with incoming Governor Abbott and Lieutenant Governor Patrick to keep Texas on its unprecedented run. Together, we will take Texas to an even higher level of prosperity. Together, we will put our bosses, the taxpayers, first. Together, we will ensure that Texas remains to the nation and the world an example of personal freedom, game-changing innovation, and unlimited opportunity. So I say now, let's roll up our sleeves and get to work. Why? Because our children's future is waiting. So may God bless you all, and through you, may he continue to bless the great state of Texas. Thank you.